Capsule. Welcome to another Office Hours Capsule. This is a small segment of my Office Hours live stream that I do on Thursdays at, I guess it's now 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. You can find us live at twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com slash theastropub live. We'd love to join you, join chat here and talking. Um, yeah, let's let's get down to business, though. We're going to be doing uh, a look at the PU monthly report for... What was this? March of 2024. Uh, and if you do enjoy these, make sure, as always, remember, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and hit the bell icon for, uh, to be updated when these release. Without any further ado, let's look at the monthly report. Here we go. All right, <clears throat> welcome to the latest PU monthly report, this time detailing all of the development progress made throughout March. With Alpha 3.23 looming, CitizenCon on the horizon, and Pyro inching ever closer, there's a lot to look forward to this year. Read on for everything done in pursuit of these endeavors and more. AI features. In March, AI features continue to fix bugs and make improvements to human combat and other AI behaviors. One particular bug threatened to become our new standing on chairs issue. A bug that has a lot of individualized causes so that it can keep cropping up on different situations. I'm glad that they understand that now. Uh, so like with that issue, we adopted a belt and braces approach that should eliminate it, even if new causes crop up in the future, AI features. In the defense, of AI feature team. Standing on chairs hasn't really been a huge issue. It still happens, but the reason why it happens always seems to be more server-based, and it uh, the biggest issue is them congregating together in a giant blob. The AI have this, uh, like, indescribable urge to turn themselves into a giant human amorphous creature in corners of rooms. <laughs> AI Tech. Last month, AI Tech focused on finalizing and polishing features for Alpha 3.23 alongside optimizations for existing systems. For example, work on planetary navigation was completed. This is something they've been working on a lot, so it's good to hear that. Um, this is big because this means that they can start doing things like putting AI outside of bunkers and such. Um, apparently, they had finished it earlier, but it wasn't working around poles. Like, it would still do wonky stuff around poles. So they didn't want to, um, and I mean like the poles of planets and moons, not the people, if they didn't get that. Um, it, but yeah, it, it just, it wasn't working around that, so they had to kind of fix those. The devs use the same concepts, uh, with now able to generate navigation metrics. To achieve this, the devs use the same concepts that physics and planetary tech teams use for representing planet terrain patches. Compared to the previous implementation where the planet navigation tiles were represented as a cube or par uh, parallel piped as used in traditional navigation volumes, the new method uses a volume with a skewed square rhombus shape. While this brings new challenges such as how, to, how two neighboring triangular navigation tiles will connect, it also allows navigation mesh to be generated everywhere and on all types of planets and moons. For Boyds, the team continued to implement new rules and finalize synchronization between server and clients. They also worked on additional iterations with design and polish uh, for, for the feature for release. So Boyds aren't what we have right now in 3.23, which is the uh, the bird and the, the dog, the, the Copian and the, like, Malak or whatever. Uh, the, the, the Hyperdactyl and the Cope Dog. They, uh, the boys are going to be like rats and uh, like smaller birds and stuff like that. So uh, they're not, not the same kind of creatures as we have now. AI tech iterated on new ship behaviors with design with the aim to greatly improving the AI combat experience. Substantial improvements were made to the aiming control system for ships and turrets and to perception thanks to additional, to the addition of support for missile detection. Interesting. Which means that they can shoot down your missiles. <laughs> Elsewhere, improvements were made to the navigation link system to reduce the comp computation cost over a frame by over a frame by better utilizing the new navigation anchors concept. Subsumption loading logic improvements were also submitted that will clear uh, be will more clearly show possible problems with the data so that the designers can fix them, fix them sooner. 
On the AI tool side, the team continued to improve and iterate on Apollo, which is their system that kind of, their tool that lets them work with Subsumption AI. This included implementing a new version of the sticky header tree that shows a better representation of files and folders with behaviors and missions. Animation. The animation team has been working on the Space Cow, a medium-sized bird and a predator wolf-like creature, as well as several new vehicle entrance animations. So it sounds like they're trying to get the uh, Kazi Grazer in. So the, the medium-sized bird is obviously the, the Moloch, and the predator-like wolf creature is obviously the Copian. So it looks like we're going to get the Kazi, the, the Grazer, the uh, soon as well. Should be interesting. Art characters. In March, the character art team completed a range of branded racing flight suits and continued working on outfits for the Headhunters Gang, which is one of the gangs of Pyro. The character concept art team began exploring specialist armors and worked on handoff sheets. Awesome. Art ships. So this is the big one. March saw progress on the Zeus RSI Zeus gray box was completed with all functionality has been validated with the ship currently in beauty and polish stage. Habitation and the central hallways made significant progress and are approaching completion while the cargo hold continues to progress with loading ramps main uh, main piston structure improving rapidly, as well as the ramp interior and exterior. The landing gear is nearly complete and the overall exterior continues to progress too. The Anvil Legionnaire is white box complete. It's a good update. With the team currently waiting on gameplay validation and for artists to free up before they send it to full development. The team's work on the resource network began with 10 ships nearing completion, some of which received an update list of ship items. Following gameplay at validation, relay locations will be polished. So that's a pretty big indication um, because for resource network that uh, began network is that uh, that's the resource system that's going to be used for engineering. So if they have 10 systems up, 10 ships up, uh, a ship could be something like a uh, constellation. And if they get the Constellation Andromeda done, they've pretty much gotten the all of the other Constellations done as well because of usually how they place stuff. Maybe not the Phoenix, maybe that'd be slightly different, but that's, you know, one ship is actually three ships. You know, you get the uh, Hornet F7C Mark I done, it, you get it for all of the Hornets. So it's uh, 10 ships could, it could be just 10 ships or it could be 30 ships, we don't know. Update work on a legacy ship continued too, with updates to the dash, the cockpit, and some exterior housings. Now this is actually um, for the Zeus, I believe. This seat is for the Zeus. Though I could also see it for the um, for the uh, the Aurora. Some people are thinking this is Aurora, or possibly the um, the Connie, but I don't know. It looks like an Aurora to me. Uh, I think the artist who worked on it tweeted out like. Hope you like this seat. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? They spent far too much time on this seat to get this working. It looks very good, though. CIG confirmed it's a Zeus. Okay, so this is the Zeus. Looks good, though. That's pretty good. A resource. So the resource system is big because that means multi-crew. Legionnaire is another big ship. And the Zeus is beauty and polish stage. I'm going to have to have a toss-up for what's going to be on the thumbnail here. The Legionnaire, the Zeus, or... Resource Network. <laughs> Community team kicked off March supporting the Overdrive Initiative in Silla Fortuna. The latter with a banner design contest challenging participants to craft logos for in-game fictional competitive racing or combat teams. Check out the incredible entries on the Community Hub. Lesser Weevils, the green everyone is after. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Team also spent time uh, preparing the RSI Launcher 2.0 for live release alongside a myriad of other support tasks to prepare for Alpha 3.23, 4.0, and beyond. The latest roadmap roundup, uh, more details were shared among the upcoming Alpha 3.23 patch. All the Alpha 3.22's test universe champions recognized outsourced outstanding players who dedicated their time and effort to the current patching test, uh, testing phases. The team also supported various community events. We started March with a lot of energy thanks to the recent Bar Citizen Manchester in which nearly 200 of you came to hang, hang out with devs, org mates, and good friends. Thanks to everyone for stopping by. We can't wait to do it again too soon. 
uh, talking about events, the System 7 Ground Racing League for Matmo Esports is still ongoing. Watching all these elite racers zoom by live gave us the biggest goosebumps. We also enjoyed the Crux Cup from Anzai Gaming, in which our teams took pl part once more and tried to race our way to the top scores. Community team. Who's part of the, who did, who did the Crux Cup from CIG? That's always good. The community team continued detailing the weekly schedules with This Week in Star Citizen, a series of comm links that informed the community about the Star Citizen's developments and initiatives while also highlighting creations from the community. We didn't see this month in Star Citizen this month, did we? This month, the team added a weekly new chapter featuring the top four creations from the community hub. Ooh, that's good. Uh, CitizenCon preparations are still underway with the show layout general acti uh, activations act activations taking pl uh, form. The team is excited about what's already shaping up to be our biggest and best event to date. They also publish a variety of posts, uh, post posts regarding all things CitizenCon, such as CitizenCon FAQ, to better help players under, uh, plan their travels and attendance. Finally, community updated the Arena Commander schedule, which keeps players up to date with Arena Commander's rotating game modes. Core Gameplay. Last month, the Core Gameplay features team successfully passed the go-no-go -no -go for procedural recoil, new scopes, dynamic crosshairs, and reload animation improvements. Further bug fixing is currently ongoing for these deliverables. Now, I, 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 this is fairly new, so I do want to kind of em emphasize Core Gameplay is how they've reorganized CIG in uh, this year. So in the, in the past, they might have had teams like the uh, FPS team and the sandbox team and these sorts of different kind of disparate teams. What they've done is they've taken a lot of those teams and they've combined them together into like, we've seen it in IAC, like Team Kane or, um, you know, uh, so on and so forth. Like like individual teams whose strike teams who do specific, or well, not strike teams, but teams that are doing specific things. And these are made up of groups of like UI artists and engineers and gameplay designers and QA and that kind of stuff who are working on one full aspect as it were from beginning to end. Um, I am not an expert at this, but talking with other developers and based off my own experience with these sorts of things, this feels like you would do something you would do when you're closer to the end, when you want to really tackle specific jobs to get them done. So um, there's been mention since the monthly report, or the monthly report, the letter of the chairman that CIG's focus is refocusing on 1.0. And uh, that does definitely feels like a 1.0 refocus idea where you're, you've got a plan. This is the end goal. This is the things we need to get done. So your job is to just get those things done. So as a result, a lot of the stuff we're going to see here is very purpose driven rather than we got to build this universe and play around with ideas. It's we have a goal, we have a deadline, we have an idea, let's go and get it done. That doesn't necessarily mean that won't change, but that's what you're going to read when it comes into the core gameplay. Progress was also made on ammo repooling, including network optimization and bug fixing. The looting UI was updated to support the way ammo is repooled, while reload animations now play at the current time following the rummage animation. Work continued on pre-production for base building, with gameplay features working closely with art and design to refine requirements and define metrics. So, for instance, we can already tell that gameplay features is doing like all of these things, which are in 3.23, these first two paragraphs, or the first two sentences. These are all 3.23, so we know that they're working on this. So we can, we can, right now, fairly guess that base building is a 1.0 mechanic. Because they're working on it, they want to get it out, so at least some version of base building is coming out for one point, because they're still working on pre-production. The team then added different colored loot screens, depending on whether or not the player is looting the enemy, friendly, or neutral. Did I already finish that? Yeah, friendly, neutral. Uh, an enemy friendly or neutral entity. They also added a button to go from inventory to loot screen and a pop-up window when an item swap can't be performed. They also allowed for separate loot screen styles between visor and lens. Regarding the visor and lens, the, con uh, the conversation of on-screen chat and building blocks was completed. The conversion of on-screen chat to building blocks was, was completed. I don't know if that's in 3.23, it might be, but I saw. 
The team then converted more markers to the new system, including navigation, ships, player, party members, missions, and landing pads. For EVA, the team's um, the devs for the EVA, the devs unblocked animation content to support weapon customization and two-handed carry to work with the new EVA system. They also provided support for back-end and backward and sideways flying animation um, content. EVA thruster packs now relate correctly to the layer of equipment players are wearing, meaning VFX will come from thruster nozzles on armor pieces or backpacks instead of the undersuit. Improvements were made to how shop items are highlighted when players look at them, and the positioning of AR cards was updated to account for mannequins and vehicle base on design feedback. Plans feedback. The team completed buy and rent interactions for physical shopping too. Gameplay features made their further made further improvements to prone locomotion, while additional support was provided to animation to unlock animation asset production. Uh, it does seem, if you you look back here, I'll say this: you see things like obviously community, but you see things like art ships, art characters, animation, AI tech. Those those are not included in these teams. So it does seem that there, there may not be a de like dedicated animation people to some of these. So they may have to wait on some aspects which aren't fully integrated with everything. But a lot of that stuff is also like AI is a lot of that is... Um, is tech that's shared between Squadron and Star Citizen. It's like engine tech, so. Gameplay features made further improvements to prone locomotion. While additional support was provided to anima animation to unlock animation asset production. For master modes, improvements to aiming and targeting for the gunnery system were completed, and ESP saw further improvements, including smoother responses to player input. Throughout March, development continued on the resource network. As part of this, the electromagnetic, electromagnetic emissions are now based on power consumption, and infrared emissions are based around coolant and heat generation. Neat. So they're trying to actually tie some of that stuff in. That's really what the resource network is, is everything requires resources now. Your chips, your armor, you, <laughs> your vehicles, your even your buildings will require resources, and they'll have things like heat and other things they'll need or get rid of. The team also improved the various debug tools, fixed bugs, and supported ongoing testing of an experimental arena commander mode. Temporary solution for ship hull penetration was added until Maelstrom is ready to support physical armor. Giggity. A hex penetrator, maybe? The system is subject to change as development is testing progresses, but currently all projectiles can deplete armor health. However, only ballistic weapons can penetrate the hull and damage internal components. So, temporary solution, which, if it's a temporary solution that they're adding now, it means that Maelstrom is still a year away. Um, which does track with currently where it is, uh, you know, based off of what we can see. It gets a little bit bigger so you can see. The team also improved various debug tools, fixed bugs, and supported the ongoing testing of an experimental Arena Commander mode. Uh, where I kind of skipped over that. There we go. Life support. This is part of the resource system. For life support, the team optimized dynamic room atmosphere system and made up and made it network compatible. Various improvements and refactors were also made to the room system. And various debug tools were uh, greatly improved to allow the team to test the system before the player facing UI is complete. For transit, the team's primary focus in March was supporting cargo elevators and instance hangars. Alongside general refactoring, factoring, this required adding hangar destination um, exporting, communication between transit and instance managers for available hangars, the ability to dynamically add destinations to car transit carriages, requests for the creation of hangars, and support for capturing peripherals in, dynamic, uh, in dynamically added hangars. Okay. So that's stuff they're still working on. So it's obviously stuff that they're fixing. Once complete, this team will, um, the team moved on to planning and uh, architecting a refactor of the whole transit system to prepare for the future. Something they absolutely need to do because it's awful right now, especially in 3.23. I, I, it was awful when they were doing the testing for um, 
server meshing, so it's definitely something they've been needing to do for a while. It's just not ready for what Star Citizen's going to be. For radar and scanning, the team updated radar zone queries to use the new zone query time splice tech to improve performance. Additionally, work began on signature categories, which allow the team to apply different signature detections based on the emitters. This can be used to independently detect components on a ship with higher emissions. For example, thrusters compared to offline shield generators. Sounds like they're working on scanning, which just makes sense. I think they needed to do a lot of the uh, resource network stuff before they got to work on scanning. And it was obviously a main focus since they were doing the cutter scout i think is what it is that that has that big radar dish on it so the port was also provided for the item port editor tool with a refactor of default item loadouts including defining them directly in the item port parameters with the item port container in data core additionally 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 the team supported the restoration of several core analytics and reporting of additional key information to better understand player activity across the game For Arena Commander, focus was on was close on closing out deliverables for Alpha 3.23. Most notably custom lobbies and the initial selection of custom settings. Gameplay features then continued to improve the multi-crew experience by adding access selection. Now, rather than either having a multi-crew enabled or disabled, players can choose to enable the feature for friends and or squad members only. Engineering refactored the team balancing system, removing layers of complexity that they had experimented with for Alpha 3.21 and 3.22. The new system has a sample, a simple balancing logic that provides prioritizes keeping squads together, with an exception in cases of extreme imbalance. A short delay has been added before balancing to allow for more players to connect. I think. That's for Arena Commander, for that system. The team also improved loadout definitions, allowing them to create and edit slots for different ammo types, including consumables and utility ammo. What's utility ammo? They also created a variant of the salvage and repair multi-tool with filled canisters for use in engineering experimental modes. This work also allows players to use their PU characters in Arena Commander. Players who have customized characters will now utilize that rather than the default kit actor previously used. For design, the team focused on supporting the engineering experimental modes and a selection of new maps and modes. They also continued to work on the front end UI UX patch pass, which looks to establish a style for Arena Commander going forward. Finally, the devs supported a new system for Gun Rush, allowing them to have multiple weapon lists that can be toggled on and off throughout the patch cycle. This provides more variety and the ability to test new weapon sets without waiting for a new patch. March saw progress on reputation-based hostility, with the team fixing several issues with the new reputation system. Changes were also made to the trespass behavior, and all factions will defend a trespass zone if it's owned by them and factions with the appropriate settings will also be able to defend allied trespass zones. So if you get in somebody's ship and you're an ally, they're an ally with a local area, that local area will be mad at you, is what I'm guessing. For Moby Glass, work continued with on the redesigned contract manager. Last month's work included adding a button to read unread mission info and toggle to switch between legal and illegal missions. The devs also completed payment validation for beacons and fixed several bugs, including making the contract timer reduce in consistent increments. The team then made journal compatible with the new Moby Glass and updated the home screen, including adding visuals for recent notifications, active missions, and the player's current jurisdiction and crime stat level. Support was also added to the legacy Comlink and VMS Flash apps, and visual updates were made to the wallet and assist apps, or assets apps. For missions, gameplay features provided a new data structure to mission design so they could start setting up hauling missions. Hey, I actually bothered Elliot about this, and Elliot said that I've been writing something for, for the monthly reports. Um, 
setting up the hauling missions. Overall framework uh, for the offline version of the mission service progressed while mission service debug GUI was extended to server meshing. Improved debug tools were added to the cargo hauling missions too, such as the ability to debug complete parts of the hauling uh, order to simulate co uh, collecting and delivering via freight elevators. March saw progress on hangars, including Instance Interior Manager that handles instancing logic and reserves gateways for transitioning between the outside world and the hangar. Now players calling an elevator or retrieving a ship in supported locations will create an instance hangar that, in, that, in, that the transit, air traffic control, and law systems correctly respond to. Improvements were also made to freight elevator kiosks, including the layout, branding, tooltips, delivery screen, and platform handling. The devs are currently integrating the kiosk with the personal inventory framework. The item bank is now functional and correctly uses the storage locker and updated delivery slash selection logic. And improvements were made to the warehouse system to support missions too. Okay. For the commodity kiosks, updates were made to the design along with the packing behavior and auto-loading display. Support was also was given to the lighting, VFX, and content teams towards ship loading platforms too. That's the reason why that's super long, is because that's just like it used to be like seven different teams, is now just one in the monthly report. As you can see, there's like the arena commander team, the mission team, uh, sandbox team, a bunch of stuff like that. So economy. Last month, the economy team continued rebalancing commodities, making sure they have scalable algorithm that will work with other systems like crafting. Mission rewards are being rebalanced according to the difficulty and time required to complete them. As part of this, the team are working um, to better understand how much effort and time is required to perform specific activities in game. In game pricing is currently underway for the new harvestables and hangar flare too. Economy are currently involved in the design of reputation and org progression and are starting to balance the time and cost of auto-loading freight elevators. They also provided support for cargo missions. Finally, a comprehensive list of all intended resource sources, transformers, and sinks are created, were created to help ensure the economy is stale in the long haul. Graphics, VFX programming, and Planet Tech. Throughout March, much of the department's focus was on bug fixing various deliverables for Alpha 3.23. Performance scaling operations were added to the water simulation to ensure it can scale to all hardware, while various improvements were made to water boundary shading and visor wetness to achieve a seamless effect as players enter water. Support, support for distance field collisions was also completed for more accurate collisions from vehicles. The Vulcan team worked through several performance issues as they moved closer to matching D3, D3D performance. This pre uh, precedes the enabling of multi-threading for the next release to hopefully smash D3D performance levels on CPU. GPU performance should remain similar. However, some performance issues currently remain. So depending on the location slash context, players may see worse performance, hence the beta label on Vulkan. But, at the, um, but the aim for, is for us to get widespread testing in Alpha 3.23 so we can enable Vulkan by default in the following release. Graphics, VFX, and programming. Alongside this, the team are currently reworking shaders to reduce the total number of PSOs, shaders, that need compiling when the game starts. Work on global elimination continued too, with a focus on performance as the team moved towards an internal rollout of the first version with testing by the art teams. The, planetary tech team, the Planet Tech team started work on Planet Tech V5, with internal focus on the groundwork requiring to set up spatial par uh, partitioning. They're currently deciding how this will work with server meshing and server crash recovery. The devs also introduced the concept of default planets for the internal editor so that, uh, so that it's trivial for anyone to create and use a planet for testing. On the VFX programming side, in addition to water improvements, the team continued with networking support for the fire simulation. They're also making changes to augmented reality render layer to, to enable support for holographic weapons e.g. muzzle flashes, projectiles, enemies, and impacts. In-game branding. In-game branding and locations work together on Invictus Launch Week with work approaching completion. The branding work for the cargo containers and additional signage for various locations is also nearly finished. Interactables. Last month, the item banks, now called gear storage, were finished, including a heavily worn version for Grimhex. Uh, they were then placed around the verse for convenient access. 
with a little nine tails tag. Explosive containers were reworked and now replace static meshes in levels, so they will explode if players shoot them. Red barrels! <laughs> Fire extinguisher recharge ca cabinets progress through the gray box and are currently being taken to final, while cargo hover trolleys are being finalized in preparation for the cargo hangar update. Lighting. Alongside tasks for instance hangars, freight elevators, and distribution centers, lighting worked on Invictus Launch Week. They also supported the upcoming character customiz customizer, including addressing community feedback to solve the some long-standing issues. Locations. Last month, locations team uh, polishing content. Last month saw the locations team polishing content for Alpha 4.0. What? <laughs> that that just hit me out of left field. They're polishing content for Alpha Alpha 4.0. Okay. They also closed out the upcoming distribution centers, adding content and quality to give players the best possible experience on launch. They also kicked off pre-production for new mandates officially beginning in Q2. The Landing Zone team finalized art for instance hangars and prepared them for implementation across the verse. Mission Design. Last month, the Mission Feature Team was restructured, becoming the Mission Design Team. Despite the name change, the team will continue to build scalable module content for the PU. Following feedback on the Overdrive Initiative event, the team is revisiting the standard Data Heist missions. Currently, these missions are locked to a single player who can then share the mission with their friends, which causes a bottleneck for the missions and locations. In response, the team are trailing, uh, trialing a challenge that will allow singular version of the mission to be accepted by four players who will play together as contractors. This is an effort to free up missions and locations and create similar effects to Overdrive Initiative where people usually play solo or part of a team, potentially building friendships and enhancing the MMO feeling. They did something similar back in the day with uh, escort missions. There was an escort mission that required a certain number of people, and it was a timer that timed out that if you didn't reach it in time, it would just push the mission forward and you'd fail it if you didn't get to it. But... Suddenly, like a fish fired out of a can in a reference to Alpha 4.0 content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of this stuff has been focusing on Alpha 3.23, so it's suddenly 4.0 comes out. It's like, what? <laughs> Uh, this is good. I like this idea. This is a good thing, but uh, we'll see how they function with that. Work progressed on upcoming cargo hauling missions, with players being tasked with hauling tracked goods from one location to another as requested by a shipping company, with a constrained payout of roughly 20% of the cargo's value. A hauler's income will be more stable than that of a commodity trader who buys low and sells high as the market fluctuates. Still, once a cargo hauler gets comfortable with the profession, they might try their luck at commodity trading. While the player is legally allowed to transport the goods, they do not own them. As a result, lawful stores across Stanton will not buy these commodities. To sell the shipment rather than deliver it, the player must navigate it to a fence, a no-questions-asked shop often located in an unmonitored area of Stanton. However, due to its tracked nature, this cargo fetches a significantly lower price than ordinary sandbox commodities. With the upcoming addition of Wildlife in the PU, Mission Design began working on related content, building three mission variants. Kill X amount. Kill 50 boars! Uh, this extermination population control mission tasks players with killing a predetermined number of animals on a planet. Players must locate the animals themselves. Clear location. This will be a specific location that requires its animal population dealt with. Kill and collect. This is one of the first resource collection types where the players must locate animals and collect their resources. Following a recent hire, some older mission modules were refactored, such as, uh, as such, the Destroy Illegal Satellites mission received a small f uh, facelift. Following a further testing of Blockade Runner, a small change was made to ensure that the event stays fun and engaging for all players. Work on the Xenothreat global events continued too alongside freight elevators. Narrative. Last month, Narrative continued to work closely with the design to support a variety of content from revisiting existing missions, like the new player experience, to outlining new missions being developed to support upcoming gameplay. The team continued to iterate on future Narrative initiatives designed to bring more character and stories to the verse.
Thank you. Uh, small soapbox from me. For those of you who don't know, I do a lore series as well uh, called The Astro Historian, youtube.com slash The Astro Historian, if you want to check that out, where I talk a lot about lore of various sci-fi games, though I focus mostly on Star Citizen. And one of the problems that I've always had with Star Citizen is that it's got this very well-written, very thought-out universe created by four or five writers over the course of over 10 years. Yeah, it's still got some issues here and there, but I would say it's a fairly well thought out game for the game that Star Citizen is trying to be. There's a lot of detail which is yet to come out. And a lot of the reason why we haven't heard about it or really felt into it or reason why people get connected to it is because there's no connection to it. There's no reason for you to care. You don't understand the universe that's happening around you because CIG hasn't like forced you to do so, quite frankly. And bringing some of those stories into the game will get people more invested in the universe or invested in certain factions, which will get people to want to care about the universe and play the game more. Uh, narrative, I think, is key to a game's longevity, uh, game like Star Citizen's longevity and health. And the fact that they're working on this is good. Off my soapbox, continue to talk about this. <laughs> Yeah, amazing story. That's not in the game. That's the problem. And this seems like they're moving towards putting it in the game, which is good. The team continued to iterate on future narrative initiatives designed to bring more character and stories to the universe. This resulted in a series of proposals that have been reviewing with design. They also continued to outline ways to improve AI behaviors to sell more of the Star Citizen lore. Narrative also met with some of the gameplay teams to talk over lorification of upcoming systems. The lore is there to support the gameplay, not vice versa. So while I understand there might be some hesitation in some cases, especially from development teams who want to do cool things and don't want to be told that there's limitations, um, the lore can be fixed. <laughs> it can be molded to fit whatever the fuck they want. So, yeah. Uh, another group of posts went up on the website as well, including Whitley's Guide for the 890 Jump. The narrative team also tackled a handful of questions from the forums in a new edition of Loremakers alongside another batch of Galactopedia articles. Ooh, online technology. I haven't seen this team before. In March, the online technology team worked forward toward refactoring social services back end. This involved ports, uh, this involves porting the services to gRPC as well as making updates for server meshing. The team are currently working to reduce EAC false positives in preparation of enabling sanction enforcement. Lastly, online services finished off long-term persistence work for the character customizer, enabling players to save their characters between patches. This is a long one. R&D. In March, the con uh, work continued on the temporal render mode. Tracking movement of objects moving through clouds was improved so that history can be rejected or kept as correctly as possible. A novel method was developed because uh, typical dis disocclusion algorithms only work for opaque scenes, but the team want objects to fly through transparent clouds, be partially occluded by clouds and fog, etc. The generation of blending a soft depth for clouds and atmosphere was improved. This depth of uh, information was crucial to properly handling history rejection when moving through clouds. The team also supported the Gen 12 slash Vulcan endeavor by analyzing the current list of pipeline state objects, PSOs, used to render the game and suggested several ways to reduce it. These suggestions were being worked on by the render team and will result in shortened shader pre-cache phase uh, the first time players start the game. Pre-caching is done to avoid shader activation related hitches during gameplay. It's one of the reasons why if you first boot up the game, there's a ton of hitches and problems, but the next time you boot up the game, it's a lot easier because a lot of that stuff is cached. Um, it's one of the reasons why they tell you to delete your, your shader folder when you get a new new thing because it's got a bunch of old shaders that may be outdated and be updated. So deleting it, it forces it to clear that cache and then re-update it, which will then cause more hitches and stuff like that. Tech design. Tech supported various areas of development to, to prepare for Alpha 3.23 and beyond. 
This included item banks with the team making a new rundown variant uh, entity, setting up a state machines, setting up state machines and animations, and iterating on the main screen and player interaction points and flow. Hangers were supported alongside ship flight, including iteration on a new AI behaviors to make them more responsive to player actions. Master, mo mo master modes received polish too. Support was given to QA for visual scripting um, automation, and nodes were added for setting up setting, added for getting and setting up player states. Stats. For UI, tech design worked on test level setup and FPS crosshairs and hit markers, updating and polishing animations and fixing bugs. General bug fixing was also done and various tools and workflows received improvements. UI. Last month, the Montreal-based UI team worked closely with the core gameplay and UI teams on the new cargo-based new cargo gameplay updates. This effort encompassed the development of the new freight elevator kiosk, commodity kiosk, and item bank. They also began preparing mandates coming later this year, including the resource network and up and jump points. The UK based team focused on adding new player-facing UI to the game. The new version of the Moby Glass was made fully functional in time to get player feedback with visual polish still ongoing. The new visor and lens received visual improvements, while the last functionality elements were ported over by the programming team. UI also continued to polish the new shopping UI and character customizer uh, ready for release. Lastly, VFX last month, the VFX team finished their work on distrib distribution centers and freight elevators. They also completed tasks for several upcoming vehicles. Progress continued on jump point effects, including concepting new uh, concepting based on new gameplay considerations that became apparent during testing. The team also took another look at water effects to coincide with the graphics team's plans to release some of the water improvements that were shown at CitizenCon. That was a long month of report, so sorry about the length of this one. This usually isn't this long, but basically what we can gather is that VFX has done some updates. There's a bunch of UI stuff from Moby Glass and item banks, and there's lots of hangar updates. So there's definitely, there's definitely still pushing to get the, because currently the, um, as of this recording, persistent hangars and cargo elevators are not in 3.23. Uh, they are still planned, but uh, they weren't in their, uh, the first wave PTU, EPTU yet. But this is definitely saying that they're working on it, and they've uh, they're definitely working on it through through March. Uh, let's see, get some of the yeah, EAC is coming in. Uh, we've got the uh, the push to get more narrative stories into Star Citizen, which I'm glad for. Um, they've completely revamped the mission team to the mission uh, design team. Uh, mostly focusing on wildlife PU kill missions, satellite mission uplift, like facelifts, uh, did some blockade runner stuff, Xeno threat stuff, uh, and the cargo hauling missions. Kind of an overview on that and how that's going to work. Uh, locations is working on Alpha 4.0, <laughs> as well as the distribution centers. There's a lot of stuff in the distribution centers, especially for the lighting, customizer. We get the fire extinguisher is going through gray box. We got an explosive red barrels. Uh, lots of work for Invictus stuff. Uh, Vulcan is in the process. They're going to try to release Vulcan for Alpha 3.23. The economy is going through a big over overhaul, rebalancing commodities and making sure they scale properly, as well as mission rewards uh, and reputation population. And then we had a lot of stuff for gameplay. Most of the stuff is dealing with Arena Commander and uh, Alpha 3.23 stuff. So Arena Commander, uh, missions, creatures, what else? Moby Glass. Uh, there's a new temporary solution for ship damage. So now Ballistic weapons will penetrate holes, so obviously Maelstrom is still a ways off. And uh, Master Modes is getting updated. Uh, lots of stuff for building blocks. 
Then we've got ships. Zeus is in gray box in what they, they call it beauty and polish stage. The legionnaires in white box. Resource network is being worked on extensively, as well as a legacy ship for to, to be updated. Let me know what your thoughts are for that in the comments below. Um, racing flight suits, uh, um, headhunters, and uh, specialist armors, as well as animation for the Kazi Grazer, the um, Moloch, and the Co uh, Copian as well as new vehicle entrances for animations, and then a lot of stuff for AI, mostly working on planetary navigation, some uh, combat experience, like, like combat AI being improved, and uh, yeah, just making behaviors more better for AI. So that's it for the March monthly report. Let me know your thoughts down below on any of this, this stuff. What do you think about this? Is this big? Is it bad? Like, what is your favorite part of this? What is your least favorite part of this? Let me know in the com comments down below. And uh, of course, join us live, twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com slash theastropub live, uh, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'd love to have you come and hang out here with chat. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>